Next we have with us Dr. J.S. Rajkumar who graduated from the Madras Medical College Chennai with 32 gold medals. After that he went on to do his post graduation and got four FRCS to his credit. He is a prolific surgeon with a huge volume of laparoscopic and open surgeries in Chennai since 1993. He is also one of the international examiners for the Royal College of Surgeons Edinburgh. He is the chairman of the Lifeline Group of Hospitals founded by him in 1997. He was also responsible for setting up the first ever stem cell unit in Chennai and also for reporting the first successful case after stem cell therapy. He founded a trust in 1997 called Dr. Rajaratna Medical and Educational Foundation by means of which he continues to render free service to hundreds of HIV and cancer patients. He is a recipient of several awards for his vocational excellence from organizations like Rotary, Lions, Public Relations Syndicate, Ved Vyas Trust, etc. From what I know of Dr. Rajkumar, I've always known him as a very active and energetic uh, speaker and uh, to give away the inaugural address, which is going to be very, very powerful. Welcome you, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. I want to start by uh, thanking Sri Ram and Sujit and Sham, uh, the makers of this uh, very, very well-planned one-day seminar. Congratulations to you too, Santhil. It's a very nice thing you've put together and I hope that this sort of thing happens frequently. I'd also like to say thanks to uh, Mr. Basant Krishna for that very good uh, inaugural address and for the other very nice thing that he wrote. He didn't write the Bhagavad Gita or the Gita Anjali. He wrote the check uh, that supported the day, which is very important too. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I want to start by saying that we are actually on the brink of a, an ecological and workplace disaster. Just as sub-Saharan Africa got wiped out by HIV in the early 80s, uh, late 70s and early 80s, just as a lot of productive Germany got wiped out towards the end of the Second World War, we now face a very, very similar disaster. We are on the brink of a disaster and we are seeing it and I think we need uh, you know, health and wellness awareness initiatives like this beautiful one here put together by these few people. And I'd like you to stay with me for the next 20 minutes to 25 minutes but I'm going to run you through a lot of data which is going to impact you directly, the people whom you work with and there, thereby it's going to impact productivity uh, overall at the workplace as well. Look at the current status of health. I just went through some of the health status um, demographics in India and across the world. And if you look at the people who work with you, look around at yourselves and at the people who work with you, most will be in the 25 to 45 age group. Some like myself and Mr. Vasan Krishna are blissfully a little outside the 25 to 45 age group. But this is going to be the biggest, biggest age group. I don't look it. <laughs> I sure feel it. Uh, are actually in this group, and this is the group that I've written there. Terrible, because if you compare the 25 to 45 of today with the 25 to 45 of the 70s and 80s, our state is dreadful. Now I'm going to smash open a number of myths. I discussed this with uh, Sujit, and he said anything that's straight off, which can be verified, you, you can tell people. You might be thinking that the average Indian lives much longer than the average Indian did in 70s, 80s. Very true. But I'm saying the average 25 to 45 health is much worse than in the 70s and 80s. That also is very true. So how, how come this happened? Because the infant mortality was terrible in the 70s and 40s. You know, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, many, many children were dying and that was skewing the average age to a much uh, to seemingly younger compared to what we are. But actually, those of us who survive childhood are much more now and we have terrible health. Look at that, uh, the next line telling you that between 1988 and 2000, there was a 70% increase in the prevalence of diabetes in this group in the city of Chennai. Let me just tell you, as a doctor, as a surgeon, to me it means all across the world, every seven seconds, we cut off somebody's leg for diabetes. Every 20 seconds, one life is being lost for diabetes. And every 30 seconds, somebody is going on dialysis with kidney failure for diabetes. So the problem really is very big. It's huge. And if you look at yourselves, your families, the number of people who are suffering from diabetes, hypertension, and cholesterol triglyceride. You know, you just walk around with it. These are silent killers. They get inside you and they drag you down. And this is called non-communicable diseases. And your group, the so-called organized sector, 
we're not talking about you know pure you know construction industry which is quite unorganized or bridge building or which is you know, public sector we're talking about the organized private sector i'm putting in the first slide these are the things that are going to drag down yourselves and your people huge healthcare burden cancer is also on the rise i'll talk to you about it in a minute and of course psychiatric illness it's like the hr guy who went on a a trip with his friends you know went to one pub another pub friday evening and then we wakes up somewhere in some hotel at uh, one o'clock on saturday many of you might uh, get into the situation so he rings up his wife this i got this idea when i saw listening to dr vasan krishna rings up and says have they phoned you don't pay the ransom i've escaped so that's a very useful thing uh, but then what you need to do is look at where you're heading where are we heading the dangers ahead are that in the 25 to 45 already if you ask your ask yourselves or in your companies many people will be dropping down dead of heart disease either they will drop down dead which is bad or they will jump off the seventh or eighth floor we've heard of a stray incidents which is also very bad and the next stage they will start pushing people off the seventh floor which is equally bad so these are all the dangers that lie ahead and i think it's important for us to imagine and understand that to be forewarned about them is to be forearmed what are those who indices of growth and development if you look at between 2005 and 2014 india moraji desai when he was prime minister somebody asked him is india a forward or a backward country and he said no it's an awkward country and that is typical moraji desai he used to answer every question with another question when uh, david frost and bbc asked him why do you answer every question with another question he said why not so it's very typical and you need to look at what is growth and what is development if you look at india in terms of growth we had more billionaires than any other except moscow we had more billionaires than any other country the number of people who bought mercedes benzes and porsches maximum in amritsar and ludhiana more than in in manhattan and in london and you know but so growth wise yes maximum number of people in the high income group yeah but development indices number of people dying of communicable diseases non communicable diseases india is still worse than bangladesh and sri lanka and many of the african countries so how, what is the answer we have a problem before us you guys are going to de- decide what the workforce with you is going to take on and the answer i think is to adapt you know if you look at obesity is another major i always say whether you're Uh, employee is coming from arunachal pradesh up north or andhra pradesh down south you look at his madhya pradesh his madhya pradesh will start getting bigger after the age of about 35 40 oh sure when you guys join them when you, they join you they're 22 and 23 and everyone is slim but not everyone can used to be slim like sujit or like sriram here and you'll find that this that central madhya pradesh part will start growing more and more and that definitely increases the incidence of heart disease look at this man from the cro magnon neanderthal man went up went up to the second last and then see what the last 20 years of uh, burgers and pizzas and aerated drinks have done for him so indians are getting fat obesity is swelling among our middle class youth the main reason if you ask me which is the biggest killer if you ask me the biggest enemy to india today is not some jihadist it's not china it's not pakistan it is simply fast food it's it's the fast food culture which is strangling us it strangled the us strangled the uk it strangled europe and now it's strangling us the amount of fast food amount of simple calorie sugars is actually killing us unfortunately compared to america i want you to carry home this message indians are more prone to dying early and therefore the fast food culture which started giving americans and uk people heart attacks at 60 and 70 will start giving us heart attacks at 35 40 so to whom is it going to happen to us to you to us and to your people watch out fast foods are the killers i'll be talking my last slide is on initiatives wipe out fast foods from your canteens and you'll start having a much healthier more productive workforce so we are going to survive the next 15 minutes of my talk is how are we going to survive in this environment charles darwin very famously wrote in origin of species it's not the strongest or the fastest he actually wrote it's not the fittest or the fastest that survives but which creature survives that animal that adapts itself to its environment and now we have an adverse environment we have plenty in the midst of poverty and we therefore need to adapt we need to survive look at the kangaroos how do they adapt australia is the most arid country in the world and you know how kangaroos adapt they come into the shade and they just lick their forearms the forearm of the kangaroo is very very thin skinned the blood runs just under the skin and when they lick themselves they cool their blood and that's how kangaroos survived over centuries and centuries in australia so we need to be like the kangaroos 
licking themselves to survive like the bacteria and camels in the cold Gobi desert only ice in the morning the ice doesn't become water it becomes vapor so they actually eat ice at 4 o'clock in the morning before it vaporizes and they eat small amounts to, and the ice becomes water inside the stomach of the bacterian camel. So us HR guys, we need to become like the bacterian camels and survive in the Gobi Desert, like the kangaroos and survive in Australia. We are on the brink of a disaster. Let's look at how we can change the productivity and morale. So what adaptation requirements are we going to bring on to combat this NCD disaster, non-communicable diseases disaster? 50s, 40s, 60s, people died of chickenpox, influenza, you know, smallpox cholera now people are going to die of diabetes cholesterol and these are much more expensive deaths so you need to make certain lifestyle changes you need to make certain dietary changes you need to make certain mindset changes and you know most of us so beautifully said by Ralph Waldo Emerson I think this applies to almost everybody in this room most of us spend money that we don't have EMI 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 buying things that we don't need to impress people whom we don't like you don't buy a Porsche to impress your father. You don't buy a nice Porsche house to impress your wife. Whether you come in an auto or whether you come in a Porsche, your wife, wife is going to like it as long as you come back at 5 o'clock. But you want to impress the guy next door. You bought a BMW, I'll buy a Porsche. You bought a two, two BHK, whatever these things mean. I'll buy three BHK or six BHK or whatever. So I think getting out of that mindset itself, what we call mind over heart. And of course, when you say I'm in shape, this is not a shape. Round is not a shape. You need to start working out towards that. Oh, sorry. Okay, so what diet changes? What I'm going to tell you is going to affect your life. So write some of these things down. From today, go very high on protein. We'll talk about that later. Basically, if you're a veggie, take lots of legumes, lot of chana, lot of ground nuts, lot of moong dal, lot of parupa, uh, etc. If you're non-veg, go on white meat like egg, chicken, fish, etc. Don't go for beef, pork. Go lower on carbohydrates. Very important to go this you know, putting so much of rice on your plate, making one hole on top of it like Kilimanjaro, putting so much of ghee in that, then pouring some parupa on that, pouring some sambar, everything is floating about with oil. Go outside in this hotel, I'm sure you'll find paneer, butter, kumami, there'll be, you can put Australia, Africa, you know, the ghee and oil are floating about. Avoid that. Keep fats down. Go up on protein, go down on carbos, go down on fats, go more on vitamins, go more on minerals, go on trace elements, simple things like nickel, cobalt, minerals and vitamins. You know, if I mention the measure the vitamin D in this room, at least 50-60% of us will be short of vitamin D. Because how many of you go in the sunlight and bathe like Saroja, Saroja Devi? I find a lot of women, I thought they are like ninjas. They go like, you know, fully covered and everything is covered fully in black. Just the eyes are slit. I'm wondering whether they'll take out a sword or a shuriken or something. Maybe it's too, you know, most of them are pillion riders. So maybe the parents won't find out who's riding on the back of this handsome. <laughs> but, then, <laughs> but the net result is that they're actually going very low on vitamin D. And when you go low on, when you go low on vitamin D, when you go, I'm saying be a ninja. All right. And go down ECR with your boyfriend or whatever. But then take your vitamin D. Because if you don't take enough vitamin D, you have a significantly higher chance of breast cancer. In 2013, India's number one breast cancer, cancer in women became breast cancer and not cervical cancer. And one of the main reasons for that is having a low vitamin D. So now I'm going to talk to you later about customized medicine. What's medicine for her might be different medicine for him, for him and for him, based on their genes, etc. Finally, those of you who are free, try to read this fabulous book called Transcend by one of my heroes called Ray Kurzweil. Ray Kurzweil was one of the guys who started off believing in the computer. You know, Moore's Law, he believed in IBM, Intel, and he got a program called Transcend. It's got T-R-A, read up this Transcend on the net, and he says that you can actually reverse aging. You can see his photograph when he started this program when he was 42, and now he, he looks younger than 42. He's got six packs, and uh, you know, it's the same fellow's photo. He lives in a ranch somewhere up in Indiana, one of the brightest, most intelligent minds on the planet. And he measures his own vitamin, his uh, DHEA, etc., etc. So fast food versus street food. Have a look. You get 400 calories in traditional street food for 10 rupees, whereas you get 800 calories for 335 rupees. So on the one side, they're depleting your purse. On the other side, they're pumping your stomach up, and this is what will happen to us. So fast food is a quick way of dying. So... I need you guys to make lifestyle changes. When I said lifestyle, you know, my, my daughter asked me, Daddy, 
aren't you homophobic sort of thing well i am but it's different lifestyle is different from what i want you to do i always you know when i talk on hiv i say we moved from the days of adam and eve to the days of adam and steve but uh, here the lifestyle changes are exercise and when you say exercise we know that even if your grandfather is 55 or 60 ask your father is 60 ask him to take up some weights and start doing that we know that if you challenge the muscles you may be ask 50 year old 60 year old women to hit the dumbbells because when you do that do strength training you'll have increased calcium deposition in the bones they don't get weak less chance of fracture men who do strength training as a r- routine tend to live longer than the guys who just walk up and down so and also this latest data this year's data indians need 60 minutes of exercise 7 days a week europeans need 45 minutes of exercise 5 days a week we have a much higher propensity for cardiovascular disease look around us we're all going to be dead before our counterparts in the west look at the people who die just you go on the net and google people who die early of heart disease in america the number one group in that asian indians you put indians who died in the 40 to 50 patel 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 malhotra patel 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 in the us you know you know why i think i think i know why so so i think that 60 minutes of any form of exercises even walking up and down the corridor you know that beats watching 60 minutes of every mother in law trying to kill every daughter in law every husband trying to kill every wife every husband having six affairs with everybody including the ex door neighbor who happens to be a man you know that's typical of our mega serial so i think mega serials on one side are killing us other side fast foods and unaware of these two unaware of these two we are dying in between so you see a patient is saying problem is obesity runs in our family problem is nobody is running in your family that's why you're all obese it's nothing to do with obesity look look at the mindset changes that i want you to have winston churchill at 94 look at his kind of thinking there's a reporter who said sir we are celebrating in your 94th year he was knighted around that time and he said i hope we all we all celebrate your 95th i hope i'm there to celebrate your 95th about the next year winston churchill looked up and down at the reporter and said i don't see why not you look quite healthy enough to me <laughs> he had such a positive approach about his own health and we need to go that way we know that things like meditation yoga alpha rhythms number so now it's not important anga poi velagara solti it comes back then it becomes very important to us you know yoga meditation transcendental all these things are very indian you know from the kama sutra to the tantric yoga we only have all the kama sutra written is all written by western reader writers and then we read it though it all originated here the same thing with tantric yoga same thing with the transcendental meditation maharishi mahesh the same so i think it's very important our itihas tells us to stop and smell the roses a little bit at least we're living in chennai you stop and smell at least the kuvam but stop and smell it you know it's worth it when you're running madly you work to deadlines and i must say that in the it industry i believe i believe that the deadline looking at deadlines is much more we surgeons we work to deadlines you have to finish some particular operation by by that particular period of time or the guy can't take anesthesia you know so you're pushing you're working against the clock working to deadlines and we surgeons have the highest incidence of heart disease i'm standing in front of you as fit as ever but i've i've had pretty severe heart disease myself because we working to a lot of tension working to deadlines and that happens in the it industry too what happens is adrenaline is running for all of us steroids are running and these two are very bad for your blood vessels whereas the happy the guy whose photo is there as very jealous of this guy in your one day seminar on top he's got this dhea and growth hormone D- this guy this is this is the look of the man with a lot of dh dihydroepiandrosterone if you meditate if you do yoga don't work on deadlines don't keep on looking how how hot is my neighbor's wife how cold is my wife if you don't do that you'll be like this guy D- your dhea level will go up and your dhea goes up that's a happy hormone it works at the pineal gland settles the entire body look at i think you should look at the long innings all of us we study sun tzu art of war fabulous book written in the 5th century chinese guy he says for fighting he's telling the emperor which we can all use in our lives stay and fight by the river long enough and the corpses of your enemies will come floating by the idea is if you stand in there long enough eventually you'll make it no point in having a quick burnout which is indian style quick up and quick down it's all over so i think all of us must look at like the sachin type of long innings he started early finished late and we should all look at that now this is something for you guys for your healthcare this is an important thing called the blood code check if indians must check these things check your glucose your triglyceride and your hdl tgl hdl is a fat in your blood 
look at the last three none of us checks i bet you i bet you this go back to your healthcare i i bet you nobody in this room is actually checking this you need to check it to increase your life span if your ferritin the women is low you need to increase it if your homocysteine in the men in india we have what's called hyper homocysteinemia and the high homocysteine causes the cholesterol to clog up your arteries unless you check it a guy might say oh i don't have diabetes i don't have bp and walk away he might be having a high homocysteine which will kill him and finally the current concept is you have a toppa not because of any other reason but because indians have insulin resistance to bring down your insulin your toppa will vanish so it's as simple as that so easy you don't have to copy hrithik roshan to get a six packs you know there's been a huge paradigm shift medicine is an inexact science you treat 10 people you cannot give any guarantee in medicine but nowadays there's a huge paradigm shift it's also becoming an exact science precision is coming into medicine if you look at the first world war and second world war though there was much more bombing and shelling in the second world war actually more people died in the first world war only because medicine was much more developed in the second world war penicillin came about in 43 44 and between 44 and 45 the maximum number of casualties were saved although the atomic bombing happened in the second world war more casualties more people died in the first world war from bayonet wounds and saber cuts etc because there were no antibiotics similarly you can expect more from medicine the machine was telling me tell us what we should do beyond mhc 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 that's just the most basic way in my mind mhc is just like wearing a, your underwear you have to wear your clothes on top of that that's this until now a six sigma is impossible there's no medical healthcare unit anywhere in the world that's got a six sigma because it's impossible to get only one error out of 1 million it's just not possible because we're dealing with so many variables but we are looking at least at increasing the amount of accuracy making it more accurate so we're talking about racism this guy is saying me a racist the only race i hate is the one where you have to run so you need to bring that in this is what's killing india many of us here or our spouses and a lot of our workforce people will be suffering from metabolic syndrome typical of indians metabolic syndrome means if your waist size in india is more than 36 and if you have either sugar or blood pressure or cholesterol or vitamin d is low you are having a metabolic syndrome you have a much higher chance of dying of vascular disease than your caucasian counterpart unfortunately indians got saddled with this there's a fabulous reason for that which is, which came out in national geographic that india was a complete desert sahara was all completely green the thar desert was most of india many 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 millions and millions of years ago when the whole world was gondwana land so we what we did was indians we incorporated into our gene the gene of a nearby virus which is causing cough and cold called the adenovirus we call ad36 we incorporated that virus and because we incorporated that virus we managed to survive in the desert how did we survive even little food we took we st- stored, stored that as fat and of course 100 million years ago we chose to store that fat around our bellies and that's why you feed an american an american red indian and an indian asian indian same amount of food the asian indian will start developing like ganesha whereas the american indian will not develop that and the caucasian won't develop that so we are unfortunately later the desert became green now we are we are having a surfeit of food and that's dragging us down so please look at the blood code basics for your people this is uh, somebody saying i signed up for an exercise class and they asked me to wear loose fitting clothing and i said if i had any loose fitting clothing i wouldn't have signed up in the first place <laughs> so very important slide for you do you want to live long everyone wants to live long you know the mahabharata yamadharma asks uh, dharma what's the strangest thing in the world and he says beautifully after a little bit of introspection although all around us people die every day we all live as if we'll never die so one of the strangest facts of life and this ved vyas telling us that so anyway these are some good tips on how you can actually live longer it's possible that if you all survive until 2025 it's possible that we'll actually be able to start tweaking genes and get people to live to 120 years whatever i'm telling you is documented it's in science nature highest impact journals in the world there's a gene called the methuselah gene methuselah those of you who are christians here will know in the first five books of the bible the old testament methuselah lived for more than 120 years indeed he started having kids at 120 you know amazing um, for me it's bad enough that abraham started having at 80 but methuselah started having at 120 optimist so 
you can create the methicillin gene in human beings and there's a huge methicillin program going on how we can extend life work how we can tweak genes add one hydroxyl moiety here add one methyl moiety there but for us we know that calorie restriction if you beautifully it's written the tirumandram in tirumandram the 8th century saint tirumula wrote you know moonru vela saapta you are a rogi you will be sick rendu vela saapdrama bogi he is enjoying life oru vela saapdrama yogi you will live long and tirumula himself is supposed to live for 3000 years eat less and live more the indian atithi devo bavah you bring them you feed them till they die of heart attack and they become deva you know that is that becomes atithi devo bavah you know badal ho gaya so this is why as a rule please make your people this only play playing only on sunday let's all go off to beach resort fully get drunk on saturday night you play some games on sunday monday everybody is having a sprain so next 15 days nobody exercise and they get fatter you know that sort of thing doesn't work calorie restriction is important women and men women in india will always live longer than men because women tend to have a pear type of obesity more in the butt and the thighs whereas men have around the belly that's there is that pear type of obesity that it is the reason why every woman everywhere in the world thinks that her butt is very big it's very good for them because they live longer on an average 8 to 10 years longer than men though of course many people feel that uh, women live longer than men because men are married to women whereas women are married to men but that's a very sexist way of looking at it <laughs> i'm just joking so one way of i'm um, some tip, tips for you to carry home being a woman itself gives you an advantage starve after sundown i find all this ulta in the new culture i find people jamming the pubs whether they jam the pubs or not they jam the tasmax fully from morning to night the pubs being jammed at 7 or 8 people eating if you eat after sundown your metabolism is different and if you eat after sundown it gets stored eat as much as you want during the day breakfast to dinner very important carry home message for you have a heavy breakfast because your body will take care of it very easily have less at lunch and have least at dinner and you will be like this all of us what do we do we run for work so we have little little breakfast little mid for more, more for lunch maximum for dinner shape also is like a walaka <laughs> so the shape will be according to how you have your breakfast lunch and dinner very important have drink a lot of hot water through the day some data showing that hot water actually helps you to burn hot water hot tea etc helps you to burn out what you having Pre- plenty of fruits and vegetables exercise throughout not only a ja- walk around the block but exercise throughout female employees is my major worry that there is a high incidence proven statistically data proven high incidence of infertility these days in female employees because all female employees are sitting in front of a computer whether it's in the bank whether it's in insurance sector whether it's in healthcare sector whether it's in uh, IT sector you're st- sitting in front of a computer and a computer although it might give you all the information is actually slowly frying you with microwave radiation you know you can't wear a space suit and sit in front of a computer but there are some ways of getting past that and that's why there's an increasing incidence of cancer breast increasing incidence of cancer cervix and what happens is one thing in one side you're getting radiated on the other side you're increasing your high fat diet you know i don't see any any old lady selling you know buttermilk in the it parks it's all KFCs and Burger Kings and McDonald's and all these things which are so loaded I must tell you if you stop going to them you don't need to come to doctors there's a massive whole scale poisoning as poisoning I asked when I had dinner with Sachin a few years ago with some close friends and we asked him only one question and he laughed and refused to answer that I said so your children all your children drink pub, Pepsi he laughed and they didn't didn't even answer it's very obvious his wife's a doctor and many of my friends are very close to her. they don't take none of those sorts of say dil mange more and drink pepsi none of them are taking pepsi and coke they make sure the children don't take pepsi and coke but you and i are looking at them and we're drinking that and we're killing ourselves and we're killing our children that is the greatest killing in the world not you know anything else finally some significant issues please try to avoid doing night shifts in uh, women because yeah i've lost two slides don't worry my father used to always quote banacha and say you must if you're a good speaker the, the good speech must be like the length of a woman's skirt george bernard shaw famously said it should be long enough to cover the uh, subject but short enough to be interesting <laughs> so my dad also used to say he used to tell me this my dad so we uh, women who were 
do night shifts, what happens is when you do night shifts, your, your rhythm changes. And when your rhythm changes, your hormones change, and because of that, it causes infertility. So one simple move you can do from tomorrow is try to move all the women to one shift. You either work them at day or you work them at night. Don't make them work a day and a night. You keep shifting, you jack their pineal glands, P-I-N-E-A-L glands, and that causes issues. Preferably, it's better for women to work during the day and not at night. So this infertility is a major, major issue and you find people are spending lakhs and lakhs and lakhs on getting fertile. All they need to do is eat well, exercise well, not expose themselves to radiation, not do night shifts and, you, and you'll get pregnant. I, I was telling one lady, you know, you're doing night shifts, your husband is doing day shifts. Unless you're together, how are you going to get pregnant? Then you're complaining of infertility. First of all, you be at home together. Get out, you know. It's ridiculous. You work different shifts and you say, but I'm not getting pregnant. What, do you expect like Holy Mary, Immaculate Conception? Future of healthcare. This is a very important slide because this is the future. I have here with me my brother who's doing a lot of very, very original work in Bangalore in a company called Cellworks that works on something called proteonomics, genomics. These are going to be the future. If, for example, Mr. Vasant Krishna came to me with a little bit of pain five years from now, I would do a quick gene study on him which would give me in two hours, I would know whether an attack of appendicitis would really become serious in him or not. If he is the sort whose appendix is more likely to burst, then I would say, sir, let's knock off your appendix right this minute. If his gene said, no, no, can wait, I'd say you go for your board meeting, take these antibiotics because you are DRW1 positive, DW3 negative, you can, you can still have it in 10 or 15 days. This is called customized healthcare. You know, people go to the, I find people going to the, going and coming out of all these hair lounges, one floor's hair is going up like this, one is going like this. I know, it's very customized these days. If you can customize a hairstyle, you can customize, I find people wearing jeans as if a bunch of rabbit dogs have attacked and torn various parts off. You ask him, it's new uncle, you know, it's brand new. <laughs> I ask him whether the dogs are new or the jeans are new, but uh, whatever, it's his problem, but it's customized. When you can do that, customize. Customized healthcare is just at the horizon. It's coming in. And you can do that. Genomics. You can study your genes. You may be 40. You can study your genes. And very, very soon, you can know that by 50, you'll have type 2 diabetes. By 53 or 54, you'll have cholesterol. By 58, you'll have uh, triglyceride. Therefore, alter your diet accordingly. You're not going to get anything. In that case, you can have your double sundae and your uh, devil cake. So this is happening. Do not think it's a mere fantasy or science fiction. You know, when we started stem cells, more, many people are thinking, oh, stem cells, is it a gimmick, is it this, that. Last year, somebody in US, the trachea was burnt out. The trachea is the windpipe. They took the patient's own stem cells, stem cells, reconstructed the complete trachea, and just fitted it in. I tell you, in five years or ten years, nobody will have liver transplants. I was part of the first liver transplant in, in India in 1995. Great moment for me, December 24th. But I can tell you in 5-10 years, there will be no liver transplant. You just give a few of your cells, they can cook like cookbook recipe, like Chef Damo. You can cook a liver and say, well, here's your liver, here's your kidney. They've already started doing it. So, spare part medicine, it's called spare part medicine. Genomics, where you look at your genes and you can say, you have this gene, therefore, if you have TB, you will not respond to this and this and this antibiotic respond to this antibiotic it's not very far off and we hope to be able to bring another version of it what i would like you all to concentrate on are also the last two lines for example i know that anand is uh, anand and group at cellworks they are working for uh, to, to to kill tuberculosis by looking at how we can beat tb resistance by tweaking the genes anti-aging and anti-dysmetabolic procedures they are really really completely possible anti-aging you can there are a lot of little let me tell you something very simple you can carry home you can carry home. You're in bed. Make sure you turn onto your stomach and stretch yourself up like this. Anything that causes extension of the spine is an anti-aging. Anything that causes flexion of the spine is pro-aging. That's why as people become old, they don't become like this. They go like this. And that's why simple asanas, like the bhujangasana, no? it's like in the push-ups, you lift up like this, the bhujangasana, is anti-aging. It's all given in the kundalini, it's given in so many of the shastras, the brahma shastras, it's all there, that you can actually, the, the age at which an Indian person should die is actually 110 to 120. By toxically poisoning our minds, poisoning our brains, poisoning our bodies, and poisoning our flesh, we are bringing it down to 70. And it's possible by adopting the right practices, 
can do very good anti-aging. There are drugs for anti-aging. You know, women feeling sick and angry and, you know, at peri perimenopausal. You know, they say, what's the difference between uh, Al-Qaeda and women perimenopausal? Answer, you can negotiate with Al-Qaeda. You cannot negotiate with perimenopausal women. You can negotiate with them if you correct them by giving them the right mix of steroids. Why do you want to let them suffer? It's all, everything in the body is just a small chemical tweaking. You fall in love, it's chemical tweaking. You get angry, it's a chemical tweaking. Everything is neurochemistry and is therefore possible. The last line there is anti-dysmetabolic procedures. Don't get confused by that. This is my, one of my pet areas where we operate on people and make them non-diabetic, non-hypertensive, bring their cholesterol to normal, make them lose weight. Many people will say, oh, all this, maybe there's some side effect. Immediately they'll start thinking. But 10 out of the top 10 cabinet ministers, three people, who I personally know have had this. Nitin Gadkari, Venkai Naidu, and now Arun Jaitley. They've all had it. All of them have reversed their diabetes. All of them have reversed their blood pressure. All of them have got normal cholesterol and triglycerides, and they all lost 15 to 20 kilograms. I believe it's a fantastic operation for people who have already gotten there. But for the rest of you, and for the rest of your workforce, this is what I would like to push. By using all these, and by using the seminars like these, you can avoid getting there. But if you've already gotten there, then you need our surgeons to sort it out. So what should you do? First of all, you please believe in doctors. You know, healthcare in India, many of you know because you're dealing with the healthcare reports and records of people in the US, is dismally low. I've visited several African countries who are among the poorest countries in the world, Rwanda, Burundi, Namibia. They're, even there, the healthcare is at least twice as expensive as India, and that's why all of them are flooding in. What's going to happen? Look at the last slide. Medical tourism is going to, is going to threaten to dislodge local clientele. In five years, according to my readout, you want, you want to get a room in a hospital, they'll say, sorry, or somebody from Oman is sitting there or somebody from Saudi is sitting there whose billing is going to be four times as much as you, who won't crib like you, who won't hustle like you, so please go away. They're going to start saying, so best way is prevent sickness. Don't fall sick and then be corrected. What you don't want to do is to come to us after you fall sick and then to go to them for insurance. They're also happy if you take insurance and if you don't use it. We're also happy. There are a zillion other ways of making money. We don't want to do to operate on sick people. Who gets pleasure by cutting off feet? Who gets pleasure by cutting into people's bellies? Who gets pleasure in removing somebody's colon and giving them a permanent colostomy? Not us. And if there is any kind of feeling that there is, that a feeling among uh, medical, uh, medical personnel, that is totally wrong. So believe, number one, discuss with your doctors. In many of your centers, we have our doctors. You can discuss with your doctors, so-and-so has got this. What can be done about him? Not, in my mind, the healthcare that's practiced today in India is, that's not the way to do it. We need to do well before. Customize medicine. Execute healthcare. Simple things like checking your vitamin D. Mammograms for women above 40. Pap smears. Checking homocysteine levels for men with bellies. Insulin levels. We will help you. At any point of time, we are very, very glad to help you with that. Follow up. Medicine, like anything that you do, is an iterative process. I'm sure every... No, you leave out your people. You just go to the public at large. 100 out of 100 people have insured their motorbikes. 100 out of 100 people have insured their cars, their scooters. 100 out of 100 people have insured their bloody washing machines. But only 17 out of 100 have insured their own bodies. I cannot understand that. And in India, insurance healthcare... Mr. Basant Krishna will tell you, it's ridiculously low. It's ridiculously low. You pay 3,000, 4,000 rupees a year and it covers you for 2 lakhs or 3 lakhs or something. Whereas, they'll buy Pongal sweets, Deepavali clothes for that much. I can't understand that. So, follow up, it's an iterative process. You have to be at it over and over again. Remember, healthcare in India is very, very low. Medical tourism threatens to dislodge local clientele. I'm sure... Some of you will have questions. Rudyard Kipling very famously said, five friends who have helped me hold my head up high are who, what, where, when, and why. If you ask questions, you get answers and you learn. I would like to thank Shriram, Sham, Senthal, Mr. Basan Krishna, and my good friend Sujit, who is as usual organizing everything from the back for having brought me here to interact with you. And if you have any questions over the next few minutes, I'm very, very happy to take them. Thank you all for not sleeping. Those of you who slept for not snoring, it's been great talking to you.